Greetings to you, our television audience. I'm June Brooks Paul, founder, president of Operation Outreach for Souls. Thank you for joining us today as we share God's Word, Holy Ghost Prayer, and testimonies. You may note from the logo that we've been involved in a number of activities such as radio, literature, workshops, and now television. My prayer is that your life will be enriched as we share God's greatness and goodness with you today. Hello, good evening, good morning, wherever you are viewing us, uh, what part of the world you're in. We thank God for you. I'm Sister June B. Paul of Slider, Louisiana. Operation Outreach for Souls. And let's begin by giving the Lord a hand clap. Right there where you are, say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Always remember to thank him and to worship him. Because he loves you, and he is your maker. He is our maker, and he loves us. Praise the name of the Lord. And always, don't forget to share that with someone else, because people all of them, they need to hear someone else say, Jesus is our maker. He's our creator. Amen. And we were created for his glory. We thank God for each of you who are viewing, and we have a very special treat for you today. And... Uh, before uh, we bring our psalmist today, uh, Psalmist Florine Heron, we're going to pray. And won't you join us in prayer? Amen. Just, if you can, I would like to just lift those hands to God in adoration. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, oh Father God, we thank yes, you. Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. glory. Hallelujah. Oh, your glory, oh God, your glory oh, in the name of your blessed Hallelujah. Son, Jesus Christ. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Hallelujah. Spirit, have your way Hallelujah. today, Hallelujah. these next few moments, as we lift up the name of of your Son, Jesus Christ. God, the Father, yes, Son, Lord. and Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, we humble ourselves Glory unto you, Lord, and we worship you, O Lord God. And even as the kings did in Revelation 4, and they were there, they took off their crowns and they bowed down through them, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Yes, Can you out there say that with us? Holy, 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 Lord, God Almighty. Try it one more time. Come on now. Lift up those hands and then bow your heads. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God Almighty. Almighty. Wonderful Savior. Now, okay, so the enemy has no part in this prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Has no part in our lives, as a matter of fact, in the name of Jesus. And Amen. now, uh, Brother Kevin. Are you ready? Can we have our psalmist? Is she ready to minister <laughs> the music? Because of recent violence all over the country, all over the nation. Jesus. And I was especially touched by listening to the reports of a young child, Anna Marquez Green, <coughs> six years old, from the elementary school there. And her parents and friends said that she was just devoted to Jesus. And, and they showed her a picture of her singing Come Thou Almighty King. Right. And that's yes. a hymn that I learned as a young child, too. So I'm going to share that with Amen. you at this time. Jesus. Come Thou Almighty King, help us Thy name to sing, help us to praise Father And from 
to eternity, love and adore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Amen. We're moving right along. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to choose life. Life, 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 life in the word. Life, 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 not death. And certainly all the angels are here. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is here. And now we're going to go to the gospel to share the life of God in his word. And thank you, Apostle Bail again for coming to be with us and then uh, before you leave we're going to pray for those who are traumatized and those who are saddened those who are sick hallelujah but have you what is the lord had what has the lord placed on your heart to Amen. share with us today Amen. Apostle Ronnie Bailey gave his life to our Lord Jesus in 1974. As a born-again believer soon after in 1976, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and has submitted and committed himself to serving the Lord all the days of his life. This was evident in 1985 when Apostle Ronnie Bailey answered the call into ministry, resigned his secular employment, being obedient to God's divine plan and the leading of the Holy Spirit became the founder and pastor of Rock of Ages Ministries with a heart of love and a very humble spirit has allowed his gifts to reach out to the lost at all cost. Service to God with a servant's heart, founded Home for the Homeless Shelter, ministering to the whole person by way of sheltering feeding and clothing, as well as helping countless others suffering in the areas of drugs and alcohol bondage and mentally challenged conditions, changing lives through the word by empowering and encouraging many to live a lifestyle of above and never beneath faithfully trusting in Christ Jesus. Outreach Ministries Apostle Bailey Faithfully trusting God began a radio broadcasting outreach ministry in 1986 and by 1987 obeying God started his televangelism centered in the vision of preaching, teaching and total deliverance. These TV programs, airing each week in Louisiana covering over 25 cities and parishes, touching tens of thousands of souls, forever having a desire to reach the lost at any cost. In 2006 Apostle Bailey launched his first webcast channel via internet, now to date one channel, has grown to over 20 webcast channel being viewed 24 7 and 365 days a year. I'm not going to turn to it for the sake of time, but you can write it down and you can study it for yourself because it's a little deep. But it's, it's known uh, by most of us that are viewing, especially uh, those of us that are men and women of God and uh, have some uh, biblical training. Um, it says that, uh, you know, when God formed Adam, mm -hmm. okay, he formed him in his image and in his likeness. Mm -hmm. And he said that he breathed it into Adam's nostrils or the man's nostrils, okay, and he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, I wanted to just bring attention to that. Mm -hmm. I call that the first breath mm -hmm. of God, okay, when he bred into Adam's nostrils. Mm -hmm. And the word breath of God uh, in Hebrew is called Ruach. That's what it, it, it means, the breath of God. Ruach. So God Ruach into Adam's nostrils. Mm. And remember, he created him in this image and in this likeness. Right. And uh, in, in different parts of the Bible, it says that, you know, that men are gods, mm -hmm. but with the little g. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
and God is the only one that has the, uh, you know, can be classified as God with the capital G, mm. or with the capital G, capital O, capital D. Mm. See, when you speak of God being almighty, mm. uh, often, you know, because God has given you that mission to make sure that we don't forget that one particular thing, you're speaking in the G, the capital G, the capital O, and the capital D. You're not speaking with the capital G-O-D, okay, because there's different names of God in the Bible. Now, let me just cross over to that because that's very interesting in this uh, particular uh, program and in this particular mission that God has sent you on. The word uh, Elohim, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and I'm just going to touch on this real briefly and go to the second breath. Uh, the Elohim, okay, uh, as we've known that that's a name for God, a mm -hmm. principal name of God. It's, it, it relates to God being almighty because the word El alone, mm -hmm. okay, means mighty power. Mm -hmm. Okay? El, E-L, just E-L, yeah. not Elohim yeah. now. El by itself means mighty power. And when you put the name together, Elohim, it means mighty, uh, mighty creative power that sustains. Mm. So I'm going to leave that right there. Right. But that's what the word Elohim means. So that's that capital G, capital O, oh, capital, capital D. D. Yeah. Just wanted to leave that. Well, right. that's what bred into Adam's nostril, right. God himself. Mm. Okay. Uh, now, the second breath, okay, remember that's found in, in, in Genesis 2 and 7. Mm -hmm. The second breath was found in St. John 20 and 22. Mm -hmm. For those that want to, you know, uh, write that down, uh, and, uh, you know, you may look at it later or even while I'm sharing real briefly, that breath was when Jesus, okay, the, 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 the living word, the miracle man, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, when he was about to be ascended unto heaven after the death, burial, and resurrection, and he says all power has been given unto him, because at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow with tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? He breathed it, the Holy Spirit, it says, in John 20 and 22, upon his disciples. Mm. Okay? Let me say one interesting thing about the, for, let's go back just a step, back to uh, Genesis uh, 2 and 7. Mm -hmm. By the way, when God bred into Adam's nostrils, mm -hmm. okay, that was for Adam then. But, it wasn't just for Adam. Because every baby that born, God breathed into that baby's nostrils. Because it was the breath of God that caused Adam to become a living soul. Mm. So a baby borning has to have the breath of God or it cannot become a living soul. Mm -hmm. Okay? So therefore, I want you to understand when uh, uh, this is not just for the sake of learning because this is what God did for Adam. But this is what God did for all of us. Right. The first breath. Mm -hmm. Now the second breath relates, I feel, to salvation. Mm -hmm. Because when Jesus breatheth upon him, uh, it says that he told them to go forward. And he says that people can remit their sins. Mm -hmm. And he says whoever you allow, uh, you know, in other words, forgiveness... Uh, they'll be forgiven. Mm. And whoever you don't receive uh, the remitting of their sins, then it will just be canceled out. Now, whatever Jesus meant by that, that's what's in that verse as well. He just told them, he breathed the Holy Spirit on them, mm. and then he gave them the, uh, the, the, the word to go forward. Now, that second breath was not just for them, mm. just like the first breath wasn't just for Adam. It is for all, okay? Remember, Nicodemus met Jesus mm -hmm. and, and, and at, by night, and he says, Lord, he says, you know, what shall I do to enter the kingdom of God? He says, mm -hmm. well, look, Nicodemus, 
except a man be born again, Come on, yeah. you shall not enter. First of all, you won't even see the kingdom of God. <laughs> you can't even see it with, with, with the natural eyes, and neither shall you enter into the kingdom of God. So the first breath that God bred into Adam was not enough to get us into the kingdom of God. We need that second breath. And that's what uh, he was telling Nicodemus, you need to be born again. Yeah. See, when, when Adam and the rest of us were born the first time, yeah, Nicodemus we was wondering, how, what are you yeah. talking about, born well, again? Yeah, what are you talking about? You mean I've got to go back into my mother's <laughs> home and be reborn? And he says, well, you can't see the kingdom of God, so therefore you're not going to be able to understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. But I want you to know, and maybe, you know, later on, it, you know, it will be revealed to you uh, that you do need to be born again because he says... You must be born of the water and of the spirit. All right. All right. But we're not right. going into that teaching. But right. I just want to uh, bring that that's the second bread mm -hmm. that Jesus left. And let me just quickly get to the third, uh, uh, you know, so I could get that in in, 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 in this little short amount of time that I want to, uh, you know, make sure that the people don't miss this. While Jesus was almost saying, you know, while he was uh, speaking almost in the same breath, okay, mm -hmm. word wise, he said, now go. Okay, and he says, go, uh, I believe he told him to go to the upper room, and he says, and, no, he said, go to Jerusalem, mm. and he said, wait on the promise. Mm. Okay, right. now what do you think uh, the promise could relate to? And I'm going to tell you, just for the sake of time, it relates to the third breath. Mm. He says, go and wait on the promise. Now, this is the final scripture, Acts 2 and 1. Okay, Acts 2 and 1, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, also uh, uh, allow that to be given to you uh, verbatim, but you can read it uh, in your, your uh, study time. Acts 2 and 1 says, when the day of Pentecost mm -hmm. had fully come, they were all in one place mm -hmm. in one accord. Right. Sort of like we are in the studio right come now. On, really, really. And it came... As a rushing mighty wind, sort of as the people who's actually watching this telecast is on Facebook and on the various channels and venues that is being aired, even at a later time, we're all in one accord. Right. And the Bible says it came as a rushing mighty what? Wind. Wind. All right. As a, that's that third breath. Mm. Okay? Right. But this is the breath of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And the Bible says it filled them that were all, it filled all of them that was in the room. So it right. filled their spiritual uh, respiratory <laughs> system. Right. It filled them just like the breath of God for Adam, just like Jesus bred on his disciples. Right. And this breath was not just for the 120 that was in that room mm. or at the time, but this is the promise that Jesus told them to wait on. And then uh, it goes to this final scripture which is Acts 1 and 8. And Acts 1 and 8. And this relates to uh, part of your opening about miracles. We're in a time of, time of miracles. Right. And this also goes to uh, what we're, you've um, introduced to them about my ministry being international and some of the things I've done. Well, Acts 1 and 8 says, after the Holy Ghost have come upon you. Did you turn to it? Mm -hmm. you Would go. you read it for us? Okay. But ye shall receive power. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. After that, the Holy Ghost have come upon you. Now, you remember in, in, in the second chapter, which comes after this, mm -hmm. it says it came and it filled all mm -hmm. them. And they, and, 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 well, as they go a little further, it said they begin to speak with new tongues. And, and it says little flames of fire came on their head. Mm -hmm. And they begin uh, to prophesy. But go ahead. And ye shall be witnesses. And you shall be witnesses where? Unto me both in Jerusalem. Remember I told you I went to Jerusalem. Uh, go ahead. Right. And in all Judea. I've been in Judea. And in Samaria. I've been in Samaria because they're like all next door to each other. <laughs> and unto the uttermost part. See that word uttermost part? Uttermost. Uttermost part of the earth. All right. Right? And let me break that down real briefly. What that means is that's that 
international ministry. All right. Uh, Jesus gave birth to that through the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because you remember it said, John baptized with water, but he that cometh after John mm -hmm. shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and the fire. All right. The fire representing the power. So the power, you know, you can go into all the world without the power now. Mm -hmm. You can go into all the world because you just have enough money to travel, to travel. Right. and you can go even as a minister, you know, because, you know, uh, some was sent and some just picked up and went, okay? Right. So you could be one that just picked up and went, not because you're trying to disobey God or jump the gun, but because you don't know any better. Mm -hmm. but, the, but Jesus told the disciples, wait on the promise. Mm -hmm. Don't go there halfway. You know, wait on the promise because the promise is, I'm going to furnish you with the power mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the revelation that you're going to need so you know just exactly what to tell them when you go. Mm -hmm. So now, I went on and, you know, just added that I've been to Jerusalem and all that, right? But I didn't add that so I could bring attention to myself. I added that purposely so you can understand this is not talking about that God is going to send you to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. This is talking about that in that day of the Middle East, you know, is Jesus was from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So his Jerusalem was just like, you're New Orleans, mm. and in, uh, I'm in Lafayette now, <laughs> or our Louisiana. You know, it's, it's like where we, you know, born, the area that we born in, the surrounding areas. He says, he says that uh, you shall be witnesses, first of all, in your hometown. Mm. Okay? And then he says, in Judea. Now, you know, God is saying that not just the local uh, ministry that you should have, but you should have... Uh, even a regional or, you know, statewide, regional. You know, that's where television may even come in, okay? Right. But somehow you need to branch out, you mm -hmm. know? And so that would relate to Judea, okay? It doesn't mean God is saying that you have to go to Judea because you have the Holy Spirit, right? And then Samaria, mm -hmm. and these would be like going into your nation, nationwide, mm -hmm ministry all around yeah. and you you know because with the holy spirit he gives you the power he gives you the message and he opens the doors is that right yeah. and the final place is the uttermost part of the earth yeah. which is other nations yeah. so yeah. so that's what i wanted to give them that when jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel because remember it was written in red Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't Matthew talking. Uh, Matthew was the writer, mm -hmm. but Jesus was the speaker. Mm -hmm. And he says, go and teach all nations. And he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe everything that Jesus said. Now, with that, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the breath of God, mm -hmm. the breath of Jesus, mm -hmm. And the breath of the Holy Ghost. All right. Oh. That's what he's talking about. And he's saying if you have all three, you're going to have all three breaths. Mm -hmm. And if you notice the word breath, it, you know, if you would read one of the uh, scriptures I gave you, it is not spelled like B-R-E-A-T-H. Mm -hmm. It's not even spelled B-R-E-A-T-H-E like you mean, mm -hmm. you know, expect in the, in the King James Version, mm -hmm. their type of teaching, you know, breathe but with an extra uh, letter. Is spelled B R E A T H E D, mm. meaning when God breathed, He didn't breathe into to Adam's nostrils; He breathed there mm. into Adam's nostrils. Right. Meaning, He never stopped breathing. Mm. It's a pretty long, you know. God, God got <laughs> yeah. a long breath now. Come on, now. and He says, "I am your life." And I am the length of your days. Mm. So therefore, when God bred into Adam's nostrils, he became alive. He, 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 he became a living soul. Okay? But I am the length of your days. So when I withdraw the bread, that's the end of your days. Mm. Uh, thank you for being here with us, uh, Pastor Bailey. Amen. Amen. This is just a blessing. And you know, uh, many of you have probably seen Apostle uh, Bailey at some other time on this station or somewhere around the world on the internet. Amen. But we, we're honored to have uh, the soul winner. Amen. And this encourager and all that he does to the glory of God. We thank you. How long have you been in ministry, Pastor Bailey? About how long? Uh, approximately 33 years of ministry. Praise God. That's Amen. a good, that's a good number. Yeah. 33. You know why? 
because we think of Jesus in his ministry at 33. And I think it was because I was saved at 33 years of age. Amen. Amen. And I learned about that. So, but before uh, you grace us with what God has placed on your heart, we want you to remember, uh, we're going to leave you with some <coughs> thoughts that Amen. will uh, press down, deep down into your heart, into your soul. At least we hope they will. And uh, these are practical couple of practical points I want to share. First of all, as I was uh, thinking, you know, mm-hmm. and at this time, <clears throat> many of us are either hearing or have experienced the going away or the breath leaving uh, our loved ones, our friends, uh, many people we do not know, uh, many catastrophes, hallelujah, and many of those who have gone on uh, did not know the Lord, amen. Mm. But many of them did, and we're thankful for that. But whatever the case may be, some of you, a great deal of you are mourning right now, and you're missing your loved ones. You're missing it. Maybe a parent, grandparent, maybe a child, as we said. It may be a friend or whomever it is. And uh, many of you, uh, the breath that left the body of those that you know, it came quite unexpectedly. So we pray that the peace of God and love of God would just envelop you and comfort your hearts. Comfort your hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you. But you know what? As you follow along, as you seek the Lord, as you look into him and look into the hills from which come to your help, you will that sorrow that you have, hallelujah, the sorrow that you have will go away, but there will be sweet memories. We hope there will be on the loss of your loved ones. Amen. And many of you do not know. I'll tell you a story, and uh, it's from the Bible. Speaking of loss and losing loved ones, there were two, two women, and I believe their names was Mary, Mary. Mary and Mary. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, the first Mary that I want to mention was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, Praise the Lord. On behalf the Lord. of the children. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. And there are many other things uh, that we should think about and learn uh, from previous generations. Holy greetings to you, our television audience. I'm June Brooks Paul, founder, president of Operation Outreach for Souls. Thank you for joining us today as we share God's word, Holy Ghost prayer, and testimonies. You may note from the logo that we've been involved in a number of activities such as radio, literature, workshops, and now television. My prayer is that your life will be enriched as we share God's greatness and goodness with you today.